The coolest new Photoshop feature of this year is for sure the generative fill. It allows you to add stuff, change stuff, expand stuff. Of course, it's mainly made for photographers, graphic designers, but my question is, can it help us filmmakers make better videos? I'm sure it can. And in this video, I'm gonna show you one simple yet powerful trick that can help you spice up your videos with Photoshop's generative fill. Let's go. Let's say I'm making a YouTube video, a testimonial or any kind of talking head video. When a person speaks for too long and nothing changes, the video gets kind of boring. Even if we have two angles which you switch from time to time, you will still lose your viewer at some point. A great way to keep your audience focused is to add text titles, which emphasize the most important things that you're saying. So in most cases, creators will make titles like this or like this. But what if we use the power of the generative fill to create something like this? I mean, why wouldn't we take advantage of the full power of AI to keep our audience really engaged? Let me show you how I did that. We'll start by dropping our clip on the timeline in Premiere Pro. Let's now find a frame where I look straight into the camera and hit the camera icon right here to export a still frame. I will quickly give it a name and for format I will use PNG, which has always worked perfectly for me. Let's now open up this image in Photoshop. Funny fact is that you can actually edit videos straight in Photoshop. You can even use generative fill with videos, but I honestly suggest using the strength of both programs to get the best results and editing experience. So here we are in Photoshop and what we need to do to achieve the effect I just showed you is to expand our frame so that we get some clean empty space above my head where we can place our titles. But before we start, let me quickly remove this weird black thing in the bottom left corner of my image. Let's go ahead and select the crop tool. Now in this drop down menu we select the original ratio because you know we want to preserve the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now let's go ahead and expand our image. Something like this will do. So now you see we have this empty space and we want AI to fill it. So at this point we can just hit generate and see what it will come up with. Okay, option number one is obviously not something we want. Okay, the second one is much better, but we're still not there. Let's see the third option. Oh yes, option number three is definitely something that I like. I like the fact that it didn't add like a ceiling above me, but it kind of just extended the room so that we have a lot of space to place our titles. So yeah, let's stick with option number three. The only thing I don't like about the result, however, is the wall on the right side. It kind of looks unnatural. So let's go ahead and pick this rectangular selection tool, select the part we don't like and generate some better options here. Okay, now that's something I like, let's stick with it. But for some reason we now have this weird straight line right here. So let's go ahead and fix it. For that I'm gonna go here, right click it and choose select and mask. Here I need to play around with feathering so that it blends smoother into the image. Once we're happy, let's click OK. And yeah, I think it's a pretty good result. Let's go ahead and export our image. One big pro tip for you. You see, in my example, I expanded the frame and then let AI generate everything at once. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work like that. In many cases, you have to expand your image by smaller chunks. So try both methods and see which one works better for you. So now let's import our image from Photoshop into the Premiere Pro and create a sequence out of it so that it matches the resolution of our new image. Now let's add the original video we took this frame from. Let's go ahead and zoom out and match the length of these two. I'm gonna come somewhere here and now I'm gonna show you a simple trick how you can easily and perfectly align these two. Select our video, click on motion and then navigate to grab this anchor point. Hold command and drag it down so that it snaps right here. And now we go to our position and the value we have to type here should match the width of our sequence. So I'm going to write here 4343. And here you go. Our images are now perfectly aligned. The reason we were able to align these two that easily is because we only expanded the sides and the top portion of our image. The lower portion remained untouched, so we only needed to align it to the bottom. Now, in order to blend these two perfectly together, I need to create a mask around myself. 
to do that, I'm gonna come here, grab a pen tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint a mask around myself. We just have to be careful not to make it too close to our subject, because in the video our subject will be moving, so we don't want him or her to be touching the edges of this mask. Now I need to come here and increase the feathering just a bit, just like this. Let's check the result. Yeah, I think it's perfectly blended together. Now, I don't want to use this full video. I'm gonna grab just this middle part. So let me just cut it out like this. Let's go ahead and play it. But what if we use the power of the generative fill to create something like this? So now we have the video that we want. Next, let's create a text title which follows me saying to create something like this. For that, we're gonna grab our type tool, click here and type our text. Then let's go over to the Essential Graphics panel and do all the needed adjustments and positioning. This looks pretty good, I will leave it like this. Let me quickly trim this down, zoom in, but we obviously do not want to reveal the entire phrase right away. And to make the words appear one by one, the first thing I want to do is to make a cut at each point when I say the next word. Now let's select our first text clip, go to the effects controls panel, here under opacity we select the pen tool and create a mask around the first word. Then we select our second text clip, do the same thing but put inside the two words. In the third clip we put the three words inside the mask, four in fourth and do nothing for the last clip. To create something like this. I like it, the only thing is the main video looks slightly off center. Let's enable our guides and go ahead and adjust it. For that, I'm gonna select the two clips right here and nest them. And then I'm gonna zoom in just a bit and position our clip so that I am right in the center. So we're almost done at this point. The last thing we need to do is to create this epic zoom out animation. For that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a 4K sequence because I want to have this resolution for my final video. Then let's drag our giant sequence we've been working with into our new sequence. Let's zoom in, right click it and choose set to frame size to make it the size of our new sequence. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create an adjustment layer, extend it to match the length of our clip. Then with our adjustment layer selected, we're gonna go over to the effects and type transform. Let's double click it and come back to the effects control panel. Now I'm gonna go here and under transform I'm gonna keyframe position and scale, then come back just a little bit, adjust my scale to zoom in significantly, adjust position, then I'll select these two keyframes, right click them, go to temporal interpolation and choose ease out, then I'll choose the other two keyframes and ease them in. Now, with this zoom out effect, I want to have a motion blur. For that, I'm gonna unclick this check mark here, and for shutter angle, I will use 180. So, let's check the result. But, what if we use the power of the generative fill to create something like this. This technique that I showed you in this video can be used not only to improve the look of your text titles, but you can also use it to show some cool looking infographics or even screen recordings. So that's it guys, this was one of many creative ways you can use Photoshop's generative fill to spice up your videos. Thanks a lot for watching this tutorial, like it if it was helpful, subscribe for more, and until the next time, have a good one.